Here is another optimization problem that we're going to solve using Lagrange multipliers. We have a sphere from this equation and we want to know what points on the sphere would be closest to the point 3, 1, negative 1 and what point on the sphere would be furthest away from this point 3, 1, negative 1. Now before we get started we want to remind you the playlist is at the uh, website digital-university.org. If you go there and click on the free calculus videos and then once you open that up scroll down to where it has applications of derivatives and look in there you'll see that we have a whole slew of problems dealing with critical points, maximum and minimum problems and then upon completing those we have videos where we're dealing with maximum and minimum problems subject to constraints and then we have the video where we introduce the method of the grunge multipliers. So hopefully you've had a chance to visit all of these videos because we really need that background now for what we're going to present in this video. So here we have again the sphere and we want to know what points on the, what point on this sphere is closest to this point and what point on this sphere is furthest away from this point. So the general distance formula that would be this x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And we also though have this constraint that what values we have for x, y, and z they have to be chosen so that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. So this is the function that we want to optimize that is we want to find its maximum value and its minimum value subject to this constraint. And we have a square root here. We can square this if we want to and get this expression. This would be easier to work with and obviously any value of x, y, and z that minimizes this will also minimize this. Any value of x, y, and z that maximizes this of course will also maximize this. Now in our last video when we introduced the method of the grunge multipliers we had a function of just x and y and we had a constraint equation of x and y and then we took partial derivatives first with respect to x then with respect to y and then with those partial derivatives we had these two equations that we set up and again the rationale for this was discussed in that previous video. So this gives us two equations then the constraint equation itself gives us a third equation so we have unknowns of x, y, and lambda three unknowns but we had three equations to solve for them. Of course what we were really interested in obtaining was the values for x and y that satisfy these equations because those are the critical values that we're seeking to obtain. Now for our current problem it is a function not just only of x and y but x, y, and z. This is what we want to optimize. Our constraint equation is also a function of x, y, and z. So instead of having two sets of partial derivatives to take, we're going to have three sets of partial derivatives to take. First we'll take the partial derivatives with respect to x, both for this and for our constraint equation. And the partial derivatives from the constraint equation are always multiplied by lambda. And we add these together, set it equal to zero, just like we did in the last video. So taking this derivative with respect to x, that just gives us 2 times x minus 3. Taking this derivative with respect to x, that's 2x 
multiply it by lambda, add these together, and set them equal to zero. Then take partial derivatives here with respect to y to give 2y minus 1, and here with respect to y to give 2y, and that has this equation, adding this plus this together. Of course, this derivative we multiply by lambda, just like we did in the uh, previous equation or the previous video. What we did not do in the previous video was also to have to take partial derivatives here with respect to z and here with respect to z. So take this partial derivative with respect to z, that's 2 times z plus 1 right here, then take that partial derivative and multiply it by lambda, that's going to be 2z times lambda, add these together and set it equal to 0. And again the rationale for this was explained in the last video. So here we have 1, 2, 3, four equations, and the equations involve the variables x, y, z, and lambda, so we have four unknowns and four equations. So let's write these equations down on the whiteboard. This will be the first one. 2 times x minus 3 plus lambda 2x equals 0. Plus lambda times 2x equals 0, and then the second equation, that was 2 times y minus 1 plus lambda 2y equals 0. The third equation was 2 times z plus 1 plus lambda 2z equals 0. So these are the equations that we obtained from taking the partial derivatives. Now we also have the constraint equation. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. So we have four unknowns x, y, z, and lambda, and we have four equations. So let's see what we can do with them. We can solve this equation for lambda, or for x in terms of lambda, solve for y in terms of lambda, and solve for z in terms of lambda. When we do that for x, that equals 3 divided by 1 plus lambda y equals 1 divided by 1 plus lambda, z equals minus 1 over 1 plus lambda. Now what we can do is for x, y, and z, put them into the constraint equation. So this squared, that will be 9 divided by 1 plus lambda squared plus this squared and plus z squared so x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 multiply both sides of the equation by 1 plus lambda squared, and we have 11 equals 4 times 1 plus lambda quantity squared. Now, it's real easy to solve for lambda. Lambda equals negative 1 plus the square root of 11 divided by 2, or lambda will equal minus 1 minus the square root 
of 11 divided by 2. We put this value for lambda for our x, y, and z then that will give us the critical values for x, y, and z. So let's start with x. That's equal to 3 divided by 1 plus lambda. So x equals 3 divided by 1 plus lambda. Put this in better focus. Okay, and lambda equals this, so put that in here. We have minus 1 plus the square root of 11 divided by 2. These cancel, multiply by the reciprocal, and we have x equals 6 divided by the square root of 11. Then we want to do the same thing using this value of lambda. So x, the expression is x equals 3 divided by 1 plus lambda. Here then we'll have negative 1 minus the square root of 11 over 2. So these cancel, multiply by the reciprocal, and now we have x equals minus 6 divided by the square root of 11. And then, again, use these values for lambda to determine y and z. When we do that, we have y equals 2 divided by the square root of 11, and it equals minus 2 divided by the square root of 11. z equals minus 2 divided by the square root of 11, and plus 2 divided by the square root of 11. So these values here, these were obtained using this value for lambda. These values for x, y, and z were obtained using this value for lambda. So we have this set of critical numbers, and we also have this set of critical numbers. Now, in our previous videos, we had discussed and demonstrated the importance of critical points like we just determined, and then how you have to typically take the second derivative to see if your critical points are indicative of a maximum or a minimum type situation. The Lagrange multiplier technique is not amenable to that. There has to be some aspect of the problem. Um, there has to be some initial condition or there has to be some geometry involved so that you can test to see whether your critical values represent a maximum optimization or a minimum optimization. Now for our problem, remember what we wanted to optimize was this. So we have this set of values of x, y, and z to plug into there. That gives us this expression. And then we have this set of values of x, y, and z to plug in, which gives us this expression. So let's compare the two. Here we have we're subtracting from 6 divided by the square root of 11 minus 3. We're subtracting something. Here, we're adding two negative numbers together. And we square it, it comes out to be a positive number. So this is greater than this. Here, we're subtracting 1 from 2 divided by the square root of 11. Here, we're going to add a, again be adding two negative numbers together and then squaring it to get a positive number. So this is larger than this. 
then here again we're subtracting, here we're adding, so this is larger than this, so clearly this distance is larger than this distance, so this is the maximum optimization, and this here is the minimum optimization. And again, when using the method of Lagrange multipliers, we're not taking the second derivative to determine whether we have a maximum or a minimum type situation. There has to be some aspect of the problem that we can use that we can determine whether we have a uh, maximum optimization or a minimum value.